Hello folks, welcome to another uber boring bench hacking video. Today's victim is going to be the MG ZS, um, we will call it Gen 2 charger. Now this particular version is uh, smaller than the Gen 1 that we previously looked at and is a 6.6 kilowatt charger, very same as the Gen 1. Uh, but it also has a built-in DC-DC converter for charging your 12-volt battery and is capable of V2L or vehicle to load as we will be uh, demonstrating here. So enough of me talking, let's go have a look at this thing and get it to um, perform some activities on the bench for us. Alrighty, so first demo we'll do uh, here for vehicle to load or V2L as it's called which uh, for the uninitiated such as myself simply means that our battery charger is going to work backwards so instead of taking in AC power here producing high voltage DC to charge the battery here we're going to reverse that we're going to take in high voltage DC convert that to about 230 volts AC and send that back out our AC line here. So the setup is over here I have a 100 watt uh, filament lamp, 230 volt filament lamp that's connected uh, here to our output from, well now output our AC connector let's say on the charger Got a multimeter set up to measure AC voltage here. Got our 12 volt battery. And with our 12 volt battery voltage here, so you'll see the DC DC converter start up. And on our uh, high voltage DC line here, very professional, uh, we have a, um, a DC amp lamp. So I'll come over here and we'll start playing back our little can log. There we go. If we come over here, the first thing we'll see in a, when the log hits the right spot will be our um, 12 volt voltage jump up to about 14.2 volts. There it goes. So the DC EC converter has started up. We'll see we're drawing a little bit of current from our uh, HV there for charging our 12 volt battery. And pretty soon, we're going to see, uh, we're going to hear a click from our charger. Ah, there it goes, and you'll see that filament lamp come on. I'll get you in there, hopefully, <laughs> unless the flipping filament lamp washes out the camera. Yeah, of course it does. You'll be able to see it is 220. There you go, ah, just missed it. We'll have to wait for the log to come around again. But it's, um, it seems to put out 220 volts, which is perfectly fine, but it'll be interesting to see if it can actually put out 230 or even indeed 240 volts. And we just wait for our can log to come back around. There's our DC DC on again. It takes two IDs to run the DC DC and another two IDs, there we go, to put her into V2L. So there you go, 222.4 volts AC um, coming out of our charger. Uh, so apart from the CAN IDs, um, we have, so here is the little connector. Everything's kind of very experimental at the minute. The white wire is our control pilot. Blue wire is our uh, PP or plug present. We've got the control pilot grounded, just on that green connector there. And I've got 500 ohms between ground and the PP. Uh, so that's just simulating a V2L plug uh, that you would have plugged into the Type 2 uh, socket on your vehicle. Uh, so obviously we'll be able to do that when we install this in a car, uh, but just for purposes of experimentation. Uh, we're just rigging it up like that. Now our charger doesn't in V2L 
and in DC-DC, um, it doesn't have any problems if you use simply stop sending it can um, it won't go into any kind of a fault situation it'll just uh, stop doing after about a half a second there's a can timeout and it'll basically stop doing whatever you were asking it to do and then it'll start back up again when you uh, restart the can which is super nice um, so yeah this is our v2l function um, so what I will do is um, I will finish up here now on this one and then we'll get you set up for normal battery charging okay so we're set up for charging demo control pilot and plug present are sent back over to our type 2 socket that i've just screwed on the side of the bench here and it's uh, just a type 2 granny cable there to provide some um ac evse functionality for us um hv is turned on charger is turned on 12 volts 12 volt voltage is there about 12.6 or so and that's our hv current there so we we'll keep you guys over here and I will hit the can log. So we hear the EVSE come in. Our uh, DC DC starts up. See there's a little bit of current draw there on that from the HV. We hear a click inside the charger. Our charger will ramp up and start charging at five amps um, out to our battery. Now that's uh, controlled by two CAN IDs uh, going into the charger and also by the duty cycle of the um, of the uh, control pilot. Um, so that's working away. So it's basically DC DCing there and uh, high voltage charging. So I'll just stop our can log there now. It's quite a long one. You'll hear the click and um, everything switches back off. All right, so we'll have a look in here um, on the connections on the front of the charger. Just so we'll be able to uh, explain what everything does here. Now this charger, first of all, was very kindly given to me by EV Breakers uh, in Northern Ireland. And uh, they did that because this one was in a crashed vehicle and it had sustained some uh, damage to the actual charger. See here, this is one of the coolant lines here. This one's fine. This one's here has been uh, completely snapped away. And the HVDC socket uh, was mangled as well. I was able to kind of bodge some connections in there just to, uh, just to get uh, a high voltage connection on there. Now, you might see as well some kind of prizing marks here. On, uh, that wasn't the car crash, that was me. <laughs> um, when I was first looking at this, I thought, well, I'll, I'll have a look inside. It'll kind of help me understand better some of the connections because I have to say the wiring diagrams are, um, as they say in this part of the world, can be somewhat economical with the uh, truth. Um, so unfortunately, uh, there was four, four screws on the corners. I took those out, but then this has goo going around it that makes the Toyota stuff uh, look like warm butter. And uh, coupled with the fact that there's really nowhere to get a, a good uh, squeeze on it, I just decided to stop before I broke something. So I'm glad I did anyway, because there's no, um, no reason really uh, to get inside this thing. Um, this DC connector here, I will have to come up with some kind of a solution for it. I might see if I can take this faceplate off and try and 3D print something that I can 
put a gland on there or something like this. The AC one is fine, that's not damaged, and I think someone on the Discord did find the uh, matching plug for that, so I might just have to splurge and get that. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. I want to have a look at how the wiring works here. So starting on the left side here, AC plug, top right hand side. Oh, by the way, this is the single phase 6.6 uh, .6 kilowatt version of this charger. There's an 11 kilowatt uh, three phase uh, version as well. And uh, the can logs that I have um, that were actually that actually got this guy working were taken from the three the three phase uh, version from an Australian vehicle. So, starting here with our AC plug, um, top right earth, uh, bottom right neutral, and bottom left phase or live. Now, in here you'll see I have a little wire loop. There's just a Dupont lead because in the top um left cavity of this guy here there are two two pins you'll re recall on the gen one charger we've here uh behind us that they weren't actually a high voltage interlock that i thought they were they were actually one of them was the control control pilot which is why it took me six months to get that uh, charger to work because that is not mentioned anywhere in any diagram and it was only because Johannes happened to have a, uh, an MG charging port uh, that kind of gave me the little breadcrumb to figure that part out. So, this is a plain Jane high voltage interlock, so you need to short circuit those. Uh, so that's what I've done here. Likewise over here, DC side, uh, the top is the HV positive, bottom is HV negative and in the middle there you won't really be able to see them because I had to kind of solder them because uh, they're kind of partially broken off is um, again just two pins for a high voltage interlock so they're shorted out uh, so that makes our charger happy. Um, on here in the middle we have our um, signal Connect, connect connector and I'll walk you through the parts of this that I have populated uh, in, a, in a minute. But finally if we look in underneath there there's an M8 bolt terminal here, quite a heavy duty one and that's for our DC DC converter uh, 12 volt battery positive. Uh, so that goes on there. Now this plug here uh, you can get, this is one I got, I think I got it from Farnell, um, so the part number and all that I will put on the um, GitHub repo. Um, I know I probably should use the, I suppose the kind of pin out thing that they do here, but I'll just talk my way through it. Uh, there's four rows, so we go one, two, three, four, and then I think there's... Um, what is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight across. Um, so we'll say uh, the top row second is uh, ground, so just 12 volts ground. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you do actually need to connect this. You cannot just use chassis ground. Um, so even though this connects to the same ground as the chassis of the charger, if you don't have this connected, uh, you will not get any CAN messages. So coming across here then to the last two, um, we've our um, one of the two CAN buses. This charger is two CAN buses, so CAN low and CAN high. Um, second row then, was it one, two, three? three, four, five across, we have terminal 15. So that's your kind of wake up line. So when you put 12 volts on this, the charger wakes up. Uh, there's a gap, then last two are our PP on the blue wire and control pilot CP on the white wire. Uh, next row down then, we have our second CAN bus, CAN low, CAN high and coming all the way across here so one two three four five and uh, seven you see two black wires here uh, so if i 
pull those guys up here if I can find wherever they've gone. Um, you'll see I have a 100 kilo ohm resistor connected across here. That's, that would be for your charge port temperature sensor. So I just have it uh, basically bypassed uh, with a resi resistor here. And uh, finally then, coming on down to the last row, just the first pin here, you just have the red wire, which is your main 12 volt positive. And that's it. So it's not a particularly complicated uh, charger to run. The two CAN buses, I am still investigating, um, you know, what kind of messages will be going where. At the present time and for the demos uh, that you will see and so on, I've just got them connected together. There doesn't seem to be any conflicts on the IDs, so uh, they don't mind being connected uh, together, um, at least for this bench testing. So folks, there you have it. The MGZS Gen 2 onboard charger. Quite a neat little uh, box. And uh, delighted to say that we now have it operational. Uh, needless to say, the as I find out, you know, more information about it and so on, you will find that populated on the GitHub uh, repo. There'll be a link in the description to that. And we will also implement uh, control of this in the Zombieverter VCU fairly soon. So, that now gives us the two MG uh, ZS. And I believe this one, the newer one, is in some other vehicles, possibly the MG5 and so on. Um, chargers that we can use uh, in our conversion project. So I'm really pleased now that uh, we've gone from kind of zero um, with the VW stuff. It was just not really going to be feasible for folks to to utilize without um, you know all kinds of reprogramming and virtual machines and mongoose cables and all this kind of thing whereas these guys here you just send them can simple as give them a few basic signals so that's really what we were uh, looking for here uh, i want to say a particular thanks to ev breakers i uh, will put a link to them in the description as well for providing the uh, charger for me so that i could play with it and um, also to some folks in Australia, I won't mention names just in case they don't want to be associated with my particular brand of nonsense, which couldn't really blame them, um, who provided uh, can logs uh, that have enabled us to get um, not just this charger, but the Gen 1 um, also working. So I will be working on this you know, for the next few weeks, definitely figuring out what the um, what the messages that we need to send are. I've got them whittled down uh, just on a basic front. The DC DC converter needs two can messages. V2L needs and two more. And charging is the one that seems to need about between six and seven uh, messages to function properly. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and install this charger, so the Gen 2, in the red arrow that you see here. Um, so that'll give me a good test bed then uh, for utilizing this charger. And we'll also give the red arrow some V2L capability, so that'll be super nice. Uh, so yeah, that'll be all coming to a GitHub repo and a VCU firmware near you. Um, just on the MG stuff, just before we finish up, I am, it looks like, going to be getting the MG drivetrain, so the motor and inverter, uh, fairly soon. So we'll be having a look at those uh, in the coming months. Uh, it's not looking like we'll be able to drive those via CAN. Uh, because there is this immobilizer situation uh, that we seem to be seeing in a lot of the inverters 
uh, in modern electric vehicles. So what we will be doing instead is we'll do a Johannes on that and we'll reverse engineer the logic board and uh, design a replacement logic board for it. So that will be coming to probably a super boring live stream uh, near you as well. So be sure to tune out. Folks, I'll leave you at that. Um, as I say, check the repo on GitHub as I find out info if you are interested in this charger. I'll also put a picture up of the label here of the uh, Gen 1 and the Gen 2 so you can get part numbers and whatever else that you may need uh, to hunt one of these things down. So, until next time, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs down. Unsubscribe if you are foolishly subscribed to this loser channel. Um, don't check the other links like the Patreon and the PayPal and stuff because if you support me that way, I'm just going to get more of this stuff and then do more of this kind of stuff and make more of these videos. So nobody wants that. Uh, but do check the GitHub uh, repo and also there'll be firmware for the Zombie Verter VCU to support this guy soon. So, folks, that's it. I've waffled on for long enough. Until next time. Happy aluminium welding.